Hey guys, this week on the Awesome Cast, we talk about virtual reality, Twitch TV, cell phone sizes on your wrist of all places, Bluetooth headsets, so much more here on the Awesome Cast. Stay tuned. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. It's the Awesome Cast 191 live in the studios here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm Sorgatron, Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron on Twitter, MikeSorg.com, Sorgatron.com, SorgatronMedia.com, all that fun stuff. Ready to get geeky, talk tech, and all that today. Uh, with me on the couch, as usual, is at Chilla on the Twitter, John Chichilla, tech extraordinaire. What's up? I always want to look over there, and then I remind myself that I need to this look in the camera. This is a camera. That's a camera. That's, That's a where the camera goes. <laughs> That's called a monitor. We're going to teach you TV yet. One day I'll we figure will it get. all out. We will yet. Also with us, join us again, back on AJ Kuthick, at AJ Kuthick on the Twitter. Virtual Potholes. Uh, is it dot .com or dot .blogspot? I can't remember. It is dot .com. I own that one. Yeah, he owns it. Just renewed, kids. I got. I have a dope name that I own. There you go. There you go. Don't let them build up too big, because, oh, my God, that gets expensive. <laughs> I'm sitting on at least, like, five domains I'm not really using right now. But I don't want – I just don't want to let them go, because someday I'm going to use that one, right? So One day Facebook's going to come to him and be uh, like, can we buy your domain? That's what I'm kind of hoping, too. <laughs> like, one I own, I know is a pretty big deal. I'm waiting for that specific record company to come to me, and and they'll either give me lots of money or sue it away from me. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, after my one discussion with somebody from said record company, so we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, anyway, so one day, one day, that's my big payoff, and then we can get a real studio down here and do this show. Um, but of course, like I said, this is the awesome cast. We talk tech, talk geek, representing the flyover states here, uh, uh, primarily here in Pittsburgh, PA. Of course, AJ's out, God knows where at this point, somewhere in the Carolinas or something. But he's going to be coming back soon. Um, and then just visiting everywhere else, uh, apparently. Um, but, uh, of course, uh, this show, uh, you can find us here live every Tuesday night at uh, SorgatronMedia.com, AwesomeCast.com. we got links to that live page uh, where you can join us in the chat room, just like Chachi, Kelly Kyle, uh, Juggalo John, uh, Brother Sorg, Crazy Krause have been joining us here weekly, amongst others. Uh, we have a lot of fun there, and they tell us how wrong we are throughout the evening and, and, and have fun with that. Uh, you can also check us out. We're on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Stitcher, and Spreaker. Um, and you can drop us a line. We're at AwesomeCast on Twitter. Uh, we're uh, AwesomeCast.com, AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com, uh, Facebook, uh, Google+, Plus. follow us on any of those things, comment on the show, tell us stories you think we should talk about, all kinds of other stuff. We actually got a really cool recommendation for a show topic we might be doing here in a couple of weeks. Um, so we're looking for any of those. So let's get started with our awesome things of the week, which we're not getting from AJ because something just happened to his internet connection. Uh, Chilla, can you tell me what your awesome thing is while I figure out what happened over here? So, so my awesome thing of the week is the Rufus. I think it's called Rufus Cuff. And so obviously as phones get bigger and tablets get smaller, where where are the where are the smart watches going to go? Okay. And this is it, it reminded me of a couple things. So so this device um, and where did the link go? There it is. I got I got coming um, up here. So it's it has a three inch wide screen. Um, it looks about the size of, a, of a, for those on, on on audio. It's probably about the size of your Garmin Nuvi GPS in your car. Okay. Um, it it's an interesting concept to me because it reminded me of Chachi's conversation about wanting to get like kind of like a digital tattoo device embedded he wanted, yeah in he his, wanted like an lcd in his arm, in his arm yeah. basically um and it also reminded me of there was an episode a couple episodes of chuck mm -hmm. that had a device that he had that was kind of like this so it, it's a pretty big device it they're, they're saying it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna hook up with ios and android it will also operate on its own leveraging android 
Um, it's Bluetooth 4.0, it's 16 gig of storage out of the box, GPS, vibration alerts, email, text, blah, 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 blah. I'll be honest with you, the cool part of it I like is I like that, that, like, that turquoise and, and blue look that they gave it, that, and, and it's silver and black, so it has, it has a good color scheme going for it, that's one of the reasons I actually liked it. Um, I'm actually thinking about contributing to get one. How much do you have to put in to get this? this the base device? is 229 Oh my. So, I mean, it's a pretty big, big buy-in at that point. Mm -hmm. um, What's a, it's, it's less than $100 more than a um, Pebble. Okay. My issue, my issue with it is that it's huge. It's huge. <laughs> That's my it's issue. One thing, it's one thing when you have like a Pebble Watch or any of the Androids, the, the new Android Wear stuff. All of that stuff looks like a watch. It is watch size for your wrist. I hope all of you can see the size of my wrist. Um, now, I, I want you to consider the following. Ooh, good, good. This, this device is that size. This is my Verizon My5. Note that it is not on because uh, I am in an area with terrible service for everybody. Uh, that's why I dropped off. Sorry, so now <clears throat> if you'd like to see how big this is, I would like to show you this. I don't norm I don't wear a watch ever. This is how big this screen is going to be on my wrist. Mm -hmm. If I were to buy the Oculus Rift, and you can see it in the video. I got the video going too, so you can kind of see it. It, it is pretty chunky. You know, I mean, I think this is the, the, uh, no, see, I think I would wear it. I would actually wear it like flipped around. So the screen was on the inside mm -hmm. and they show what the, the examples here where he's jogging. That's how he's doing it actually. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is a business guy. He's got it on, on the front of his wrist. He's talking to it and everything. Um, versus like later, uh, this jogging guy is, has it on the inside. It kind of makes sense. It's not out while your while your arms are moving. Mm -hmm. This is my problem, and this is why I'm ha I'm having a problem with the smartwatch idea in general. Because I remember way back when I had watches, I was not terribly good with them. That screen is getting nicked. It's getting bounce off stuff. I'm a clumsy guy. i i I mean, I I'll be honest with you. I don't take extra special good care of the Pebble. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, I'll, and that's the other thing. Now that I toss out, it on the nightstand. Now, now, now that you got a Pebble, now that Chachi's got a Pebble. Well, now I can see, okay, how are these other guys doing with it? Like, I'm the one that needs the protection on my phone because, oh, my God, what's going to happen to this thing, you know? Versus my wife, who's nice, doesn't even have anything, keeps it in her purse. You know, that's great. You know, uh, it's not quite as bumbling as I am in, in the long run. But this, uh, but I, I see this as, you know, being one of those things where uh, I, this feels like the Google Glass of, of co uh, wrist computers. Like, like you're not going to wear this everywhere in every situation. This is... Although, you know, I mean, this guy's unlocked his doors with it, went in the house. I don't expect any of this happening out of the box. Yeah. When scroll, it comes out. scroll down on that page real quick because it actually goes over kind of the sizing. Okay. So the height, keep going, keep going, a little bit further, a little bit further, one more, put up, a little bit further. Okay. Right there. So, so, so it's, is, this, is this comparative to, the, to the, the Samsung Galaxy Gear and the Pebble here? So it's, it's it like. It looks like a TV. <laughs> it's the same it, it's the same height it's actually height wise it's smaller than the gear and a little larger than the pebble it's the width that's mm -hmm. like two two pebbles in size yeah a little over two pebbles so I, I it'll, it, it'll be interesting because because even your MiFi is bigger, isn't it? I think diagonally is bigger than three inches. And it's the same, and it's 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 uh, it's thinner than both. Just the, the shades. Uh, I I was I caught half or three quarters of an inch smaller. Mm -hmm. There it is, um, diagonal. So my finger, my finger is about three inches, ladies. Um, <laughs> Actually, it's four inches back. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not, I, I've i measured this because uh, I, I've – because I, I don't know why. One day I measured my finger and I went, oh, look at that, exactly three inches. Awesome. So now I can use my finger. Both fingers are exactly three inches um, to measure things when I don't have a 
ruler around. Uh, and my fingertip from here to here is one inch because I have three knuckles type of thing. Anyways, it's four. My, my, my fly is about four inches end to end uh, or divide, diagonally. It's three inches this way. So if you had a three inch thing like that, I mean, it's just massive to me. It's the fact that they had to, that they're not calling it a smartwatch and they're calling it a wrist cuff or wrist communicator. It's called the Rufus cuff. That tells me that it's that somebody has realized this is not a watch. Well, it's they say it's more than a smart watch in your in your pocket or on your wrist. I, I just look at but, it like, what I, are you going to do on this? I I don't know. I want to play with it at some point, just like with really, that. I, I don't know if you're really going to do anything. I feel like like at some point, just like. When we, um, you know, with our smartphones, just ah, I just wish I had a little bit bigger screen. I wish I had just a little bit bigger uh, area to do something. You know, same with the, our tablets, or actually the opposite kind of happened with the tablets, of course. But I could see, um, you know, this being, you know, after a few years and more use cases coming to something like your Pebbles and your Android Wears, however that's going to come about. Um, I could see just that point where you're like, man, I got a lot done on this, but I really wish it was a tiny bit bigger. Again, not as, as somebody not wearing one, I don't even know if, like, you know, uh, Chilla, you or Chachi are, are anywhere close to that, because I think for the most part you guys are getting uh, notifications. But, of course, you know, something like this, they're showing this doing a, a bit more than that. So, you know? so and that's where, that's where I... I that's what I would like is, and that'll be interesting to see what Google does with this, Apple does with this, etc. Mm-hmm. So obviously I get my notifications on the watch. I, I, I actually, if I forget to put on the watch in the morning, it's one of those things I'll, as long as I'm not halfway to work, I'll turn around to go back and grab. And if I forgot it, I miss it. It does enough. It does enough. Yeah. And, and I've actually like, like how bad is it when you forget that cell phone? And you're right. Like, oh God, I'm cut off from everything. Yeah. Why did this happen? That, that that I would turn around all the way. Yeah. Um, but the the one way the one way notification capability with very minimal two way, like I can if I'm listening to music, I can do next track. I can pause. I can pick up the phone. I can do certain things from the watch. I, I want I, I want something that'll do that next step, mm-hmm. but I don't feel like I but I also don't want to have to talk into my watch. Sure That's the awkward part. Shot. But uh, hopefully that microphone gets good enough that you can just have my wrist is here on the table. I can say you know okay glad or, I'm sorry okay good we'll do blah 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 and it'll just do that. See, but I feel weird even doing that. I tried doing. <laughs> This is this is oh, thing. this is like like the whole like the, I I had this revelation yesterday like Google Glass is a great thing when you're by yourself so because you can talk to it you can interact with it the way it was meant to be um, versus if I'm in an office environment and I start saying uh, okay reply blah 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 like you don't want to do that and bother other people you don't want to do it in the bus you don't want to do it in public it is a I'm sitting but then I feel like that kind of takes away I don't want to talk to it. when you're what's that AJ out of power. Rufus Cup will continue working on water. I, I was just talking to somebody about this today. I don't like Siri for the same reason. Yeah. And that, that's why I, I like this, because like it has a keyboard. I, I don't like talking to uh, I don't like talking to Siri. I don't like talking to my phone. I like talking to someone via my phone. That's not bad. But it's it's the talking to my phone. Like there's some times where I I want to just type like a random question into Siri, like, "Hey, who won the 1975s, the, the, the 1975 World Series?" I would like to type that into my phone. I would like to and get an answer to that. Or who's who do the peng, who do the Penguins play tonight? I would like that as like a text input thing. I don't like necessarily need to speak to my phone. Also, a lot of times that takes longer. So. Like, if I were to sit here and text my wife from my phone, I can either A, unlock my phone, get into the text app, and I'm immediately at the point where I can start typing. Or I could hold down the home button, wait for Siri to answer, then I tell Siri that I want to text my wife, then Siri comes back and says, okay, what do you want to say? And then I say my message, and then it comes back with a, a message that's incorrect. And then I have to sit there and edit it, and then finally I fix it, and then I can send it. Meanwhile, I'm ten messages deep just by typing. Like, 
I, when I'm in the car, I find myself using it occasionally. Like I use it for reminders Same and here. when I'm in the car. Same here. I actually wrote a little bit of a love letter to Siri last night. I, on I my saw blog. that. Um, so it did not make my wife happy. Um, but but that idea of I do use it to organize my day, you know, right. and it is. And I, I, then I also wonder if I was still at a job kind of like I was before where I'm in an office with four people, you know, am I going to be talking this thing as much, you know, whereas it's here on my desk, you know, and, or I'm driving into the car. Cause I always remember, it's like, Oh, I got to do that thing. And, and as far as kind of like a stress reduction thing, a get things done sort of thing, you need to get those ideas out of your head because you're going to forget about them or you're going to remember them, you know, and it takes up cycles in your brain and adds worry to you and versus, okay, now I can empty that from my head to do this and it's a perfect getting things done uh, uh mechanism as far as that does just like, just using those reminders on your phone uh, a bit more and more um on the talking side i was really impressed uh frank fuzzwad uh we were testing out the cards against humanity comcast uh setup that we talked about last week on on boss battle um he didn't know where his tablet was so he just yelled in a room okay google now <laughs> and it just like popped up um you know that kind of idea but um, but yeah, it's it's it, it's coming. And, but, but I, so I guess for the rest, you kind of want to do your Dick Tracy thing where it's up to your mouth, huh? Well, it's not that I want. See, I don't want to have to do the Dick Tracy. It's it's the setting. It's depending on what setting I'm in mm -hmm. is dependent if I want to speak out loud to my phone. If I am in the car, I don't find it a big deal. If I'm on the T, yeah. even. On the train, depending what the content of what I'm trying to text or search or whatever, I don't mind using it. Siri, it's, remind me to pick up a pregnancy test. Right, on the way exactly. Home. Yeah, you don't want to share that information. So that's where I wish. And for me, being cramped on the train in the morning, sometimes all you have is like you're holding on to the thing, and you, you're, you're. I could see myself quickly controlling something just like I do on my watch. Mm -hmm. Or, or maybe I need some, and I think there are apps that do this now, some preset text responses and, and, and to bring up texts on my on my watch, and that would be enough. And I think it's coming. It's coming. Mm -hmm. It's predictive tech and everything, and, and we're, we're getting so many different ideas. Uh, I wonder what they do end up doing with this Google Glass thing. Uh, there's this idea that they're probably not even going to put it out as a product. Maybe they'll let other people build it like Android, like this Android Wear. Um, but... You know, I, I wouldn't mind that, and then there's other form factors, you know, and hopefully more people on it will will mean it will develop and become something a little less, you know, hokey to, to wear on your face, you know. Um, I just saw a thing today, the glasses were going to have Ray-Bans and some other versions. Mm -hmm. uh, more stuff I can't afford, I'm sure, <laughs> but... Um, but, you know, I mean, that's, yeah, they hooked up with uh, the Luxottica group, which owns uh, Oakley and Ray-Ban. Yeah. So, I mean, good for them as far as that goes, because it does help take the, you know, take the, you know, the goofiness from the little band that, that's on there and everything. Even if you got the attachment sh glasses like 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 I've been looking at, because they just seem like a cheaper option for it. Um, but, uh, you know, eventually, I mean, a year or two from now, there's going to be just so many different versions from this, just like we're seeing already with the wash space, you know, and how, how old is that, you know? So anyways, uh, so with that, I, I, AJ, since we do have you back on, and although I think we may have a little bit of a delay with you with your bandwidth here, uh, can you I tell did. us, I, I, well, so we'll work with that. We'll work that a little bit. We'll, we'll just have to work around it. That's okay. Uh, can you tell us your awesome thing of the week? Um, awesome thing of the week is a thing on my neck right here. So this uh, that I'm using right now, these are the LG uh, Tone. Uh, it's a it's a set of headphones. I don't know if you can see them. Uh, that, uh, that so this sits around my neck, and it provides. It's like a, a it's a it's a Bluetooth headset, but it's also a. Um, set of Bluetooth headphones. So right now I'm using the headphones on here and the mic that's on my laptop uh, because according to Sword, the mic on this, when it goes into my laptop, it sounds like I'm underwater. A little bit. I, so, I, I said talking through a pillow. So here, I'm going to give all the audio listeners a chance to hear exactly what it is that we're talking about. Uh, I've now switched over to the microphone that's on the headset. 
Uh, here we go. There it is. I can tell that it's switched over because the sound changes in my ears when it happens. Um, so there you go, everyone. This is what it. Oh. So. <laughs> I, you know, I feel like it's doing something where it's killing your bandwidth, too. So, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's weird, and I, I, I'm i still working with it. I literally just bought it yesterday. Okay. So, I have, I'm still messing with it. I think there's some audio codec thing yeah. uh, that I have to use on my Mac in order to make that work. And just... And it sounds like... It, it sounds like from... I've switched back to the, mm-hmm. to the in-house mic. And so. it, it sounds like it's working really well for you as far as, you know, something for your phone, though, right? Yeah, so I use it. And the nice part is is that uh, because I, uh, I do a lot of consulting, um, I get a lot of phone calls. And uh, but to the point where uh, I had a coworker who, uh, or not, not only a coworker, it was Perry. I don't know if Perry's been on the show before. A friend of ours uh, said, you still use your phone as a phone? And I was like, yes, I used a thousand minutes on my phone last month because wow. people call me all the time and I use my phone. It's, it's my primary form of communication. I, I don't text. I honestly, I don't text people because I spend multiple hours a day in my car. So instead of sitting there trying to do this and texting people and trying to use Siri and not send terrible voice, uh, voice recognition texts, I just call people on the phone. And, and so this is actually really nice. And you're also hands free, hands free compliant using that thing in most states too. Yes, uh, there's no. Uh, it sits on my neck at all times. Uh, there's a. Uh, oh, it's over here it's on this one. Uh, there's a button on this uh, on this side where I can answer phone calls and turn the volume up and down. And on this side, there's a button to pause and play music and then uh, switch tracks. And all of it, and it sits on my neck. So I've had this on all day. Nice, nice. So my, is it micro USB charge? Yes, yeah. So uh, there's a thing on this side. There's a little like door on the inside of this that you can open, and then there's a little micro USB charger in there. And it takes the, like two hours to charge, and has fifteen hours of talk time. Oh, 15 hours. So, um, fifteen mm-hmm. hours. Yeah. So I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna run out of time talking during the day. Because that's um, just enough time for me to uh, – I would literally have to be on the phone from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. at night, and I don't want to do that. Um, so I, it, it's more than enough time. It is 10 hours of music time, so I can sit and listen to music for 10 hours on this on one charge. Um, so it's not bad. I just need to now figure out how to get it into my normal charging things system. Um so I have to, like I always charge my I charge my phone every night, but now I have to remember to charge this every night. Are they the uh, Are they the seven thirty model? Do you know what the model yes, number is? This is the seven thirty. Um, I they're coming out with a new version, the eight hundred, and uh, the seven hundred was the previous version. What do you know? What the difference is on the eight hundred? Sorg, as soon as you post this, I'm probably going to buy them. So make sure you add your Amazon thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> But so the, the 800, I can't remember what the difference was. I haven't seen the 800 in public. Uh, by the way, this the L, this thing, uh, the, the LG Tone, so here's the box, by the way. Uh, this is the first thing I bought at Radio Shack in the last, like, eight years, <laughs> I think. More than that, probably. They, they just happened to be the only place that was around me that had them. Uh, everywhere else, Best Buy was sold out. Um, and then, then they have a lot of phone stuff going. going. They have a lot of phone stuff going in there too. So, yeah, and it's 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 actually a, a really nice system because it's just the headphones. So I normally have uh, earbud headphones. So whenever I have a, uh, uh, this isn't like one of those things where I wear it on my ear all day. I look like an idiot because I have a Bluetooth headset on my ear all day. I just keep wearing it around my neck. People notice it because people are like, "What do you have on your neck?" But it's not like a. It's like it's like it's the not Google, as obtrusive. It looks like the Google Glass of headsets. Yeah, but it's not like on my face. Yeah, it's yeah. here on my collar, and actually, because I wear collared shirts all day, it it sits outside my collar. So people are they just see it, but they don't like. It's not something that they're like staring at, wondering what it is. 
um, awesome. instead of like Google Glass. So I, I really like it. I'm just sad that it, I haven't figured out how to make it sound good coming through my laptop. Well, I'll keep working on it. Uh, so that's the LG Tone of the 730 model. Uh, I want to try to have links for the 730 model and the 800 model over at awesomecast.com after this show. Uh, so you guys can go purchase it there and you know give us a little hand. Give us a little hand and we get a little bit kickback from that and hopefully it helps out the show. I know Shell is buying one. The, the, the 800 model adds, from what I'm reading here, um, adds in an additional ambient noise reduction technology to cut down on background noise when taking calls or listening to music. Hmm. Yeah, this one does an okay job of it. It doesn't do a great job of it. Um, but the other, the, the thing I do like about it is that uh, it does the headphone portion for listening to music, it's not a joke. It is quite loud. <laughs> It is actually really, really nice. It doesn't nice. sound like really tinny or anything like that. The the speak the actual like headphone speakers are uh, are really nice. And so the eight hundreds so, are one hundred and thirty bucks. Mm -hmm. You can get yeah, the, these were seventy. Yeah, the seven thirties you can get is uh, yeah around between fifty five and seventy bucks. Nice. So go check that out. Um, so I want to touch on one. I, I, I don't know. I haven't seen a rundown for it yet. But we might be talking about this, and I hope to have an article up soon on insertcoinbegin.com. Um, and I noticed something weird, and I still have to look into this a little bit more. But um, ask uh, Twitch.tv. Everybody's watching video games on those, on their apps, on the Xbox, on, on online, and everything's become a huge, huge thing lately, right? Uh, well, uh, Asphalt 8 is the uh, first game on the iPhone to have Twitch support. So I wanted to try it out a little bit, and you can see the results here. I'll bring up in a second if you're on the video. And you can also check these out over at twitch.tv slash Sorgatron Gaming. Um, just three videos. I did a few of them because I didn't know if I was posting because my account was a little weird. A couple of them started disconnecting. Um, so you see, we get the game and this is a very need for speed kind of game i really and I've, i talked about on the video about how it feels like i'm kind of going back in time to like need for speed 2 a little bit uh with the way that this this uh game is set up and you see me in the corner that's from my uh camera on the front of my iphone and you this is the fun thing so in driving games on the iphone you know you, you you move the phone to turn so you see me just kind of swinging back and forth in my video here um of course you know nobody really watching live. I'm not sure if the audio really picked up from a little bit. Let's see if I can pull up a little bit there. Guess not. Because um, I, I had the mic on and everything, but I felt like it might have drowned itself out. Oh, I can hear it. Well, there's the music, but, but is there... Because I tried to commentate a little bit during the thing. I just heard it briefly when I was setting up. Yeah, you see I'm talking and I feel like the music just drowned it out. Maybe I have to wear headphones. Maybe it was the actual music from the phone mm -hmm. drowning out the microphone. So, I mean, that's the first kind of experiment with it. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see We'll see what happens with it, I guess. Uh, but I like that they, they did start with something very action-packed like this Asphalt game. It's a game loft game. It usually does pretty pretty terrible like knockoff games in comparison um so i might be playing with this a little more see what else i can do with it but it's kind of cool because you go in you, you lock in with your account and you can actually see the setup screen at the beginning of the video when i turned it on right here if you're on video maybe there you go for a second you saw there you can start broadcasting you would turn the camera on and off the microphone on and off uh to do that kind of stuff so um i, I like i think eventually you'll probably see these kind of pop up in in because in, uh, asphalt 80 is, is, is even a freemium game so you can go download it and check it out yourself if you're on the iphone um but i can see them you know pulling this up hopefully eventually down the line in like call of duty games or something like that that are on the phone and pretty decent on the iphone as well so um but yeah, you guys, you guys haven't gotten into any Twitch. I want to try to get it on the right? in it on the Xbox One. Yeah, um, but I have not played around. With I think it that's the killer much. feature because I don't feel like like yeah, a lot of people are getting in on this, but you have to do so much to make it work right. Mm -hmm. Right, you have to like buy extra hardware, hook your your Xbox up to your computer, set up a webcam somewhere, and some people just don't have the setups for it. You have to do like a dedicated setup. It feels like for some of these, um, I I I. I pretty sure some of the people I know that went and bought the box still have not really done anything with it as far as Twitch. Um, but bought, bought which box? I'll, I think it's the Elgato typically that okay. people get. Uh, which is like 150 to $200 box if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, Josh, you can correct me on that in there. 
Um, but not everybody, again, not everybody has, like, uh, you know, my Xbox, it's like my primary, you know, gaming machine, so it's sitting in the living room. You know, not everybody has like the Xbox in the bedroom next to our computer. But that's where the Xbox thing. One has Twitch. That's that exactly. I think that's a huge thing. Things like on the iPhone, like this, it's built in on games on on, on your your Playstations and your Xbox is coming up, or well, some of them coming up. Some of them are already live. Um, so I, I can I can see that as a really good option. It's really going to open this up more for people to broadcast their games and become part of it. So. That's where I wonder, is there going to be a, a huge following for people watching other people playing? There already is. Uh, yeah. That's the thing. There already is. They, uh, one article I was reading this week said that it accounts for, I think, 1.8% of internet traffic. With Twitch, with, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's specifically. All of which, all, What's all that? of which go to Korea. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and that might be. That very well might be. Because it feels like everybody I know is like, Wow, everybody's watching these things. I don't know anybody watching these things. You know, it's a certain set of people. Um, kids, huge with this thing. They will watch somebody play a video game all day. I'm hearing more and more. I think, was it Doug maybe telling me about his kids will just sit there on, on YouTube and watch other play people play video games? Uh, yeah, I know a lot of people that watch other people play Minecraft. <laughs> that's that's just nuts. Like, okay. that's not, that, Peggle is on there. Peggle is on there. I can see the Candy Crush being on there, you know? <clears throat> uh, the, the people are really into this, and, and it's it's an interesting new uh, uh, medium there. As you get seasickness from me bobbing back and forth on my video there. Uh, but no, but this is fun. I, I, I'm going to try to play with a little more, try to figure out my audio problems. I'll, I'll actually try it with a headset. I just kind of do this uh, kind of real quick at like 3 in the morning after we got back from a gig their uh, Saturday night. And I'm like, oh, I can just pull this out and do this for a little bit. It's a fun game. It really is a fun game uh, as far as racing goes. Not like a Gran Turismo or something like that. So like I said, more more kind of classic arcade -y Need for Speed kind of action. So that we have an app of the week, right? So I threw this in there and I found this completely interesting. Yet again, another app that I haven't necessarily got to play with that much, mm -hmm. but seemed it got a lot of coverage and news coverage this week on a couple different different sites that I that I log in and read and um it's okay. called fire chat it's, yeah so it uses mesh networking mm -hmm. where if you don't have carrier connectivity or even wi-fi connectivity you can still chat by hopping from other fire chat users so in theory, and and I think if, if you look at this technology, this is a way to get cell service into areas that don't have great service. Mm -hmm. the, the connection is jumping from device to device to then a device that is finally connected out to the, to the internet. Um, so think of Armageddon. You fire up fire chat and it finds everyone that's probably within, what, I don't know, let's just say 100 yards of you. Or, or whatever, it's then going to hop to the next person that's close to them, close to them, and it's going to create a meshed network out of the devices, and you could all then chat. Um, this has about 30 feet for Bluetooth, or, or a dead Wi-Fi hotspot even at, at, at probably 100 yards. But it's an interesting theory, and, and to me it's an interesting technology. Um, I, I remember probably... 15 years ago there were some devices that people had at work that were short short range text message devices that people would keep on their desk and it allowed them to privately text and what would actually happen is if if i was out of range from from the person i was trying to send to it would actually hop from device to the, the message would hop from the device to the device to then get to its endpoint so i think this whole the whole mesh network could get really interesting. I mean, think about it. AJ, AJ's internet connectivity could jump from the device to device to get to him to then give him that faster I don't, connection. I, I honestly don't know. Like, basically where I am right now, I, hmm, I'm not really sure that that's really a great thing that's going to happen. Uh, I thought about going to Starbucks because uh, I know that Starbucks, I don't know if we talked about this in the past, but I think Starbucks partnered with Google and so they switched all the Starbucks over to quote unquote Google Fiber, and I use Google Fiber as a uh, with air quotes there for the audio listeners because 
I don't think Google's just like randomly running fiber to like Starbucks in Asheville, North Carolina. Ours is still uh, on an AT and T network. The couple I go yeah. to in Pittsburgh, if you if you start doing trace routes and looking where your data is going in and out of, it ends up hopping off of an AT and T. It sounds like they're just yeah. Like, it sounds this like is I, the name it, we're it, putting on. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. But I know the one that's in Asheville gets eighty meg down. Which is a pretty solid connection for a coffee mm-hmm. shop. I don't care that it is Starbucks. That's solid. Yeah. Um, oh. And I'm testing with this now. So I hit nearby, and actually, or wait, I'm on everyone. And there's so there's just like an open chat on here. Yeah, it's an open chat. That's and crazy. that's something that's something they definitely need to work on. Is, is kind of how you're going to close like, what chat. Do I, what do I do with it? So so is this the idea? Is like I'm opening this up for everybody for a chat like this? Yes. Like and you know, other people can bounce off your device if they didn't have a carrier signal or okay. Wi-Fi. Okay. So if I had an iPod Touch that wasn't connected to Wi-Fi, mm-hmm. but I turned flipped on like the Bluetooth. Yeah. I would actually bounce off your device to then get into so the mass chat. Is this something like how Bump used to work using a little bit of Bluetooth, maybe? Although I feel like Bump was like location, and we say, "Okay, you're here, you're here," and we sent that up over the internet and not. I don't think directly I don't. Device. Yeah, I don't know if Bump actually required an internet connection though. I think you could do it. With so, so I mean, is this presuming I have a device next to me, or at least a few devices away? I like like. So is- so here, let's let's do this. Take. Take 500 people and spread them 15 feet apart. Okay. And the person at the end of that line has an internet connection. Everyone else down the line will be able to, to use fire chat. Okay. Okay. <laughs> because it's going to hop from I'm, device I'm to device to device okay. till it finds a device with internet connection. I have the visual. I don't understand the use case. I don't understand where is this helpful to somebody. Like Other than I'm on a... Uh, iP- iPod Touch that doesn't have any connectivity. Um, is this like a the internet goes out? The internet goes out, or or what? My okay, so so we're thinking like in the city, I lose that tower goes down, and I lost AT and T, I lost Wi Fi for whatever reason, right? Mm-hmm. But since there are so many phones in a square mile radius here, since we're in the city, and and and. You know, maybe a couple miles down, everybody has surfaces just fine. But does it? Ha- it needs to find other people with this app installed. Right. So ideally, what if we had this built into our phones in general? Maybe iChat worked like this. Right. And it would bounce over there. I, mean, I think you have some security concerns, of course, at this point. But you have huge, cons- you have huge security. Well, concerns it's. I mean, you'd yeah, you'd have to create it in the middle. It's not really, you know. Exactly. Nice exactly. But but this is intentionally. I want to do this so I can do X. Mm-hmm. You know, and Y and Z are things i want to do on a one-to-one and if the internet goes out i still don't want to do that thing right i i think it's interesting for countries where their government has cut off connectivity okay so this is like a china thing this is like a uh, egypt Iran. uprising thing. turkey turkey yeah. just shut off access to what twitter and a bunch of other sites okay so that's that's where i see it and i also see it if for, for if you're in a location that has poor service and you can hop from device to device to device to bring up and boost that that connection, I could see it being useful. Okay, okay. So this is this is this is a bigger picture kind of mm-hmm. situation. This is kind of a, a sampling of what you could do with this. I like that. I like that. So that's Fire Chat. It is free. I downloaded it right away here on the iPhone. Is it on Android as well? Is it just I iPhone? Think... I think the iPhone's the the sample they give. And I think it might be. Um, I think it might be Mac only or Apple iOS only okay. right now because iOS put seven put something specific in the that works with the SDK okay. for multi peer connectivity framework. Um, da, 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 da. I don't see anything. Um, some comments from before when we were talking about Twitch from the chat room that you can join at uh, sorgatronmedia.com or awesomecast.com we have links for both up in there um uh, brother sorg telling us that uh, rooster Tre- rooster tooths uh, rooster teeth's let's plays are hilarious that uh, they've been doing great stuff with the machinima with uh halo and other games for years so i would imagine um and also uh, uh minecraft also just built in uh twitch so I, a lot of those bigger cult falling games i think are all going to start building those in as well um, awesome. 
So, and go check out Fireside. Or, I want to keep wanting keep to say Fireside Chat. That's not right. Um, also, uh, you got a tip of the week. Is this you, Chilla? That's me. So, I've I've been actually having an issue with some of my devices at home, mm-hmm. where I, it, it's a laptop and maybe it's closed or. Uh, it, it went to sleep, but all of a sudden I walk over to it and it's at 0%. Mm-hmm. Um, this was something, this was a link, I think it was on... Life Hacker. Life Hacker. And it's two different, and, and we'll, I'm sure we'll put this out on the website. It's called How to Find uh, How to find Out What Woke Up Your Computer Last. Right. So what it, what it does is it's two different ways of doing it. On the um, Windows platform, I think it's a command line, and on the Mac, it's in the event viewer, and you... Uh, search for wake reason, but it tells you what application actually woke your device up from sleep, whether it was wake on LAN or it was a key command or it was opening the lid on a laptop or whatever. Um, Because I do have a couple apps that I have set that if they need to, they can wake up the device Hmm. or will actually prevent sleep even. So I find find this, I'm, I'm going to start using this to track why in the hell my Windows 8 um, Surface Pro, when I when I close it all up and I and a couple hours later walk over to it, why it's down to nine percent, mm-hmm. and then I'm sad. So good tip there. Um, again, you can check that lifehacker.com, and uh, we'll have the link uh, somewhere, probably in the show notes uh, or something like that. So, um, so. I want to take a second. Let's talk uh, about one of our uh, sponsors real quick. The official pizza of this show, Chilla, you partake in this. It is delicious. It is delicious. It is Slice on Broadway. SliceonBroadway.com. Purveyors. Mm. Oh, no. Look at him. Look at him over there. (laughs) AJ's looking at that pizza. Mm. See, I'd like to point something out. I'd like to to take some credit here. Okay. Okay. Sorg, I told you about Slice on Broadway three years ago. Yes, yes, you're one of the many people that did, and we've been partaking uh, months. months is what I, I used to. to, I used to live in Beachview. Uh, I used to actually, I used to live. If you've listened to the Awesome Cast for a very long time, I think the first time I was on the show when I was living in Beachview, I think I mentioned how like I could see Sorg's house from my house. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't in so much the truth, but it was close. Uh, the Slice on Broadway uh, was right up the street. It was actually five blocks from my house. And so I could walk my dog to go get pizza. And their pizza is fan-flipping-tastic. I, I put Slice on Broadway above – I'll put it above Minio's. That's not a joke. That's fact. Uh, I'd put it above probably a couple of the other big ones in Squirrel Hill that I can't name off the top of my head. Um I put it above Fiori's. Oof. I would put it above Fiori's. Oof. Yeah, that's not a joke. I'm I'm stating facts here. I'll put Slice on Broadway above Fiori's. Uh, Beto's on on what is that? Liberty? Not Liberty. What's the what's the one? Brownsville the or Banksville? Beto's. Or Banksville. Beto's. You mean? Beto's. Yeah, the one with the cold topics. Ugh. That's just kind of funky. Uh, I'll put it above that. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll put it above every chain on Earth. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've had a lot of good pizza in my life, as as <clears throat> as you can see. This region here, this is pizza based, and uh, <laughs> I've had a lot of good pizza. It's slice on Broadway is fantastic, and I want it now. And I'm oh, I don't know, 750 to 800 miles away from slice on Broadway, and I'm real sad about that. And now I have to go find pizza where I am because, dang it, I want pizza. So. That's right. That's right. Now I got you in the mood for it. But uh, we also help them out. They're 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 helping us and the podcasters that come in here and help us out here. So we like the the people that actually do travel into the studio uh, to do this thing live. I think we get a lot more quality when we do that. Um, you know, of course, all this technology lets us still connect with people like AJ that are half a world away from us. Uh, but we so they're helping us feed at least the people that get in here. Eh. <clears throat> Excuse me, and we can help them out. Uh, there actually have nominations. Doesn't matter where you're at. Uh, there's nominations over at WPXI, the local Channel 11 here in Pittsburgh for be- Pittsburgh's best pizza, and you can help nominate them. Nominations run until March 30th, 
Monday, March 30th. Is it, is it the 30th? I thought it's the 31st. I need to look at a calendar. Um, but it, until the end of the month, you can still get your do nomination in here. I know it's a crazy address. So if you go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash slice P-G, I'm sorry, slash slice WPXI, you can go right to that link and drop a nomina nomination for them. Uh, you do have to know their street address. You can grab that over sliceonbroadway.com or actually if you go to sorgatronmedia.com, we do have a post with all the kinds of information uh, that you're going to need to uh, support them. And of course, if you do find yourself here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, get down here. We had Mad Mike who's from the Bronx, so he knows his pizza uh, on on uh, the network last week, talking about it on a couple of shows. If a New Yorker is digging on your stuff, and they have so much pizza to choose from up there, um, it's it's worthwhile, guys. So so go show some love. Go to sorgatronmedia.com. Go to sliceonbroadway.com. Go hit WPXI at bit.ly slash slice WPXI and help it out. And actually, we do have that submission is going to. That? Submissions go until Monday, March 31st at 3 p.m., uh, and I am on the website right now uh, placing my vote because Slice on Broadway forever go and vote. ever and one more ever. There they you. are the 2012 winners, so um, let's make them a 2014 winner as well. So we have a few stories. There was a, actually, I guess that was a, some of thing of uh, breaking news right before because uh, we were looking at the Sony VR experiment that was going on, but apparently Oculus is going away. Uh, uh, Chilla, what's the story on that? So Facebook is buying Oculus. So what? And they're comparing it to their yeah. acquisition of Instagram saying that this this article yeah, is saying they've already they've already pointed out that they know how to buy a company and let them continue to operate independently so are they just like investing in these kinds of companies here oh oh, oh. oh well we got aj oh, aj what oh, you got what oh, you got I, I have a thing i have a thing to say <clears throat> they're buying oculus vr because they want another place to put facebook ads that's not that's not fiction that's what mark zuckerberg <laughs> said on a conference call oh wow Oh wow! Yeah, so they're going to put Facebook ads here, not not so much here or maybe over here. No, here in this eyeball region. That's they're just going to shove them directly into your face. Um, and Mark Zuckerberg knows what he's doing. I'm I'm looking at the end gadget thing. Um, they t he's calling out virtual reality as one of the computing platforms of the future, following desktops and mobile. And yes. He talked about building Facebook's advertising into it. Wow. Two, $2 billion. So remember, kids, if you build a whole bunch of hardware that's that Mark Zuckerberg and the kids at Facebook have deemed to be one of the computing platforms. Not even hardware. Future, Not even hardware. Software. <laughs> WhatsApp. <laughs> WhatsApp. <laughs> What's no, 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 that? No. I was I was getting there. I had a point. <laughs> I'm everything. sorry. I was, I was getting we'll, there. We'll edit this out. Restart. <laughs> If you if you've made a head, if you've made hardware that you that has been deemed by Mark Zuckerberg to be one of the plat computing platforms of the future, that's two billion dollars. Um, eight times that is a texting app. There you go. Um, I, I saw it. I, I actually when the WhatsApp thing happened, everybody kind of went huh. And then a bunch of people talked about it and they thought about it. And basically everybody said Facebook wants into the, mar the messaging market because messenger sucks, I think is the term they used. Uh, it hasn't taken off anywhere near the way they want it to. And they know that messaging is a huge, huge deal in mobile. And they want to make sure that they're part of that. So they bought WhatsApp. That's why they did it. And when you have, uh, I think at one point what WhatsApp said they had 450 million users. Uh, it ends up being like four, 40 bucks a user, which is actually rather cheap when you consider how much other companies, and including Facebook, have paid for other services. Are they, either way, many, many users. even if they haven't like directly made that part of Facebook, that is still users they own. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's still... Yeah. They, I mean, when they first bought MySpace for, for an obscene amount of money for Fox because there's that many users, and now it dwindled away, and now it's not worth that. Uh, I mean, that's that's kind of the risk, but that's the game they're playing. Um, this, this, can, I, I think, can I have a side story on that, on MySpace real quick? Okay. MySpace, the, the, Tom from MySpace came out. I forget what he was really talking about. and some, He was talking about some social network. I forget what it was. It's not important. 
And some guy sassed him and said, says the guy who couldn't keep a social network alive. And then he replies back to the guy with, says the guy who sold it for $500 million to, in 2005 while you were busy looking for a part-time job. <laughs> and I was like, my space, Tom, too strong. Tom gives no Fs. Yeah. Um, no, but Tom, this, Tom's been done sitting in front of that whiteboard. He's fine. Yes, yes. Uh, this, I mean, it's still um, interesting that Facebook is interested in non-Facebooky things. Um I don't know. So, so I mean, you could see Facebook getting into gaming more directly with a, with a device like this. Um, I mean, I think we're getting to get to the point. Like, I feel, I still feel a little weird, and forget about the fact that the Xbox is a Microsoft product, considering the rest of the experiences I have with Microsoft products. Versus, I think we're going to have, you know, maybe eventually we have this Oculus Rift, and then in the fine print, you know, or small on the Oculus Rift, it's going to say, brought to you by, you know, Facebook, you know. Uh, it, it's, I don't know, it's interesting. It, 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 it's interesting to see them expanding this way, for one, and uh, in such a, such a divergent, not divergent, but a divergent way, you know, so. I think this is their, this is their Google moment. They're trying to be Google now. They're, they're, like, they're almost they're almost internally skunk working, uh, venture capitalizing on these guys, right? And, and bringing them in the fold. Like I feel like that's it. it you know, it, rather than just investing, like this is the yeah, yeah, the biggest investment they can do is actually buy them outright and and say now we have this and now they can continue doing. Now they don't have to chase investors for anything like this. They have guys like John Carmack already on it. They have the entire industry interested in this. Every every big wig in the video game industry wants to work on this thing. It sounds like uh, so now they're coming to Facebook for that, and that's so interesting. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Awesome. Uh, we also have, well, hey, let's let's stick with a little bit of gaming. Gamification is going too far. What, what's the story on Engadget about? So, so Flesky, the keyboard, the, one of the alter, alternate Android keyboards mm -hmm. that offers uh, cloud syncing and and some some different different alternatives for an alternative keyboard for for Android. You can actually unlock. Badges and themes and by using by it using it and they're, really? they're I think what they're hoping it is mm -hmm. is that well it will get the word out about their keyboard because a keyboard is such a set it and forget it kind of thing. Well, so on the Android platform, I have from time to time flip-flopped and switched up my keyboards i have uh mostly when they update the android app and the one that i paid 15 dollars for stops working i say well i'll learn to use the one that comes <laughs> what are you using it. for 15 dollars the swift the swift keyboard i use swift key and it was like 99 cents i found a i thought i paid 15 dollars for it i don't know anyway so so if you want to give flesky a try it's uh 50 off for the next 72 hours so it's a buck 99 mm-hmm um, so when the other thing that Flesky does also is, is they actually will lend their keyboard to iOS developers and iOS developers can put the Flesky keyboard in their app. Oh, okay. So, but it's main, it's, it's also a keyboard replacement for Android. So will this just pop them up like on top of the app I'm using it with? Like, I'm not, I'm not terribly clear on that. For the iOS side? No, I no, for the Android side. You just go in and switch out your keyboard. I think somewhere in the but settings no, but you so can it, pick it, what it's keyboard. It's gamifying and it's popping up badges. We'll just like, I'm typing away in WordPress and I'll say, hey, you just won a, you're a swearer. Uh, <laughs> I guess. Um, but, uh, I haven't. I... If you're able to type on Flusky's invisible keyboard, you'll get an invisible master badge or a jester guru ba stamp. Mm -hmm. um, if you have special swipes down pat. You can show off your badges. Um, they're introducing the new color themes. Um, it does cloud sync for personalization settings. I'm guessing maybe you bind it to Twitter and it tweets out that you unlocked a badge. <laughs> awesome. They have an that's, early supporter that's just badge. That's what I need. What I need. <laughs> so you can go check that out. There's a story over on Engadget. It's called the Frisky Flexi Keyboard. Excuse me. So... 
Um, other than that, uh, Google brings a photo wall to Chromecast. So I, I, I am one of those people that I actually like when I'm playing music or whatnot on a, on my Apple TV or whatever. I like the photo stream up mm -hmm. there. Or like a slideshow while I'm just doing stuff around the house. This is Chromecast's answer to that. It was interesting because yesterday morning when this launched, the the Google Photo Wall app released for iOS, and there it wasn't to be found on Android yet, and it didn't re it didn't release I think on Android into the Play Store until yesterday afternoon. Mm -hmm. But this you can actually also doodle on your pictures and then project them up into Chromecast and it'll, it'll make kind of a, a, a stream of pictures. I could see this being used at like pod camp and whatnot, like kind of how they do the, the Twitter, the, the Twitter fall. Mm -hmm. um, I like this personally for if you're, if you're having a party, just throw a bunch of pictures up there, let them rotate. Um, Where's it drawing the pictures? Is it from your phone or is it from Google plus? I th think you beam photos from your device to a Chromecast, creating a collage. Okay. You can doodle on the images before putting them up there. Um, now I, I'm on it now, and let's see. So you can you can, and when you're done, you can actually export the montage to a YouTube clip. Hmm. I'm on the wrong. I, I, I'm on the wrong Wi-Fi, and of course the TV is upstairs. So we'll test that later. But uh, a pretty cool idea. Yeah, I, I love the idea of just beaming stuff to this. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, again, I've, I mentioned before, like taking this thing, stick it in the projector or something uh, at, at a location, and now, boom, you have that. It's great for events. Um, wow, wouldn't it be great if there's a Twitter wall version of this? And there's, there's, a, there's a web version of photo wall. I'm guessing when you beam up a photo up there, it's probably going to some Google Drive location. So it's actually like... Sending, I'm guessing. They're sending them to Google Drive like from my phone or something like that. Either way, wherever this comes from, even if it is Google, like, you know, one is it makes you want to use your Google auto upload a bit more, which I'm already doing, so it's not a big deal. Um, I just, you know, I hope I can pick like, you know, something specific for it. So, because I take I take pictures of some weird things I don't want to just broadcast because like all my Evernote like every time I take take pictures of bills and receipts and stuff that's that's always in there. So awesome! So that's a Google Photo Wall. Just downloaded myself for the iOS and you can too apparently for Android as well. Um, hey, first time today I used my Google Play on my Android for uh, Chromecast. I had to rent the new uh, Scooby Doo movie. Ah. So. I'm just like, ah, I could boot up the Xbox and buy it on there, or I could go get it on Amazon and then boot up the Xbox and have to play it on there, and it's loud, and oh, I'll just buy it on my Android device and do that. So, but so yeah, that was fun. So Google Now, uh, none of us has seen it. This is purely speculation <laughs> at this point, but supposedly Google Now is finally in Chrome. Um, it's But it sounds like it's pretty hidden. Because um, if you haven't seen, if you already have some kind of notifications, I know I have them on my work computer upstairs, um, they, they pop out in the corner, but typically um, you have this little bell icon like you have in most Google apps uh, that your notifications pop up in. And if you drop that down, then, then you'll get your Google Now. So if you're not looking for it, you're going to have no idea Google Now is a thing. But it's supposed to slide out cards, and it's supposed to put a, an alarm. The bell, the alarm bell that's normally at the top of the web page, yeah, yeah, exactly, is now supposed to go up in the toolbar. It's been doing that already. It actually uh, doesn't do it on you know, mine. You know when it does that? I have. If you look at my computer here, um, I don't think you can see. I think it's cut off. But in the um, where your extensions go, mm -hmm. I actually installed a Google Hangout ex extension. If you go to like, install I don't want to have to install an extension. But no, 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 no. But I'm what I'm saying is when you do that, and here actually, if I open this up, I'll see if I, it shows me the thing here. What well, actually kind of shows Google Hangout like in the bar up top, or it'll show it like on Windows down down below. So now you'll have, and that's shown up as the bell before. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure. Or when I get notifications, it's like, do you want us, let us, want us to look at your uh, Google Voice? Whenever I get a text on Google Voice, it pops up in the corner. And then I get that little bell for notifications. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to be one more thing in there. It's it's interesting how it's integrating into the operating system like that, uh, at least you know visual, visually a little bit. Um, 
but I, good. It, it's one more place for me to use it. I kind of forgot that I have Google Now. I've been wearing the Glass quite as much. I, I, it's even, I installed the Google Launcher that you just swipe over for Google Now, and it feels like it's getting so much, you know. It feels like there might be a touch, touch too much going on in there that I don't care about because now it's saying, oh, here's some news stories you might like. Oh, here's some TV shows that you should be watching and stuff like that. And it's, it's just like, I, you know, I really liked it when you just gave me my shipment notifications and where that next meeting is and that's it. But. So you have something where you can swipe over and you get now cards? Yeah, yeah. You have, um, if you have... You have to have a, the launcher. We talked about the launch. No, no, no. It's a launcher. It's oh, the launcher. Okay, Google you're saying launcher. you're saying on your. I have yeah. that. So you have this. I use that. And then, and then you slide over, and there's a Google Now. I want that in my Chrome browser. You want that? In your, you want to swipe over in your Chrome br browser? Mm -hmm. You want to pop out on the left or something? Or or just let me open a new tab, and instead of taking me to the Google page, just that's give me what now. I'm thinking too. Like I really wish that you know that that kind of setup page that you have there, um, if like. Here, I'm going to try to bring it up here. I don't remember which key is which on here. Um, yeah, because you, you have this. You, this used to be apps. Mm -hmm. This is kind of like a Google, you know, Chromebook kind of start page kind of thing. Um, you have your apps drop down here. You have your image, Gmail, all, all set up right there, your little notifications. Yeah, it would be great if you just had search box, now cars. And maybe it's coming mm -hmm. eventually. Maybe it is. Or maybe it's a setting that's buried in there we just, we're just not aware of yet. Um, but that would be the the radius of you just start your tab, boom. There's all my now cards, but we'll see. I but it's, it's nice to see extending. It's a nice service, and I mean, I'm jeez, this is the stuff that that Android Wear and everything else is going to be built on. Um, are you even use AJ? Are you even using Google Now cards on your since your iOS uh, kind of based over there? Oh, let's turn you up. So there you are. No. 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 Uh, I mean, honestly, I, I haven't, I don't have the Google app installed on my phone. Mm -hmm. um, I don't use Chrome on my desktop. I'm actually fairly Google free, uh, except for Google Music. I've started using the daylights out of Google Music. Are you on um, all access? Mostly, yeah, I have all access. I've actually stopped using Spotify. Hmm. Um, Mostly because I've, I've complained for, for years, actually, years. Multiple 365 days uh, of, of Earth traveling in space around a star uh, about how I wanted a service where I could upload my own stuff but then also have the stuff from, like, labels and new stuff. And Google gave that to me. And the problem with for a while was that Google was missing, like, random stuff. Their catalog was just not complete. Like... They had every album that Jay-Z had ever made except for the uh, not clean version of his, like, second album. That was, like, really weird. It was just, like, random bits missing. Um, and so uh, I well, I, I started poking around a bit, and I found that they, he, they cleaned everything up, and they had gotten their catalog in place again. And I found an app that doesn't work anymore called Portify. Uh, and what Portify would do is it would look at, St at Spotify and it would look at Google Music and it would say, okay, you want this playlist? That's cool. I'm going to go through and find all the songs over here in Google Music. Mm -hmm. And then we put together your playlist. Uh, I still had to do a whole bunch of manual cleanup because it would grab the not explicit versions for some songs but not others. Uh, it would grab from the wrong album. So it would just find the song and then it would put it in the playlist. But it messes like, it wouldn't necessarily come from the actual album. It would come from like a single side or something like that. But the fact that I can upload music and then have it integrate into my regular work playlist that I have from Spotify is really, really, really awesome. In fact, I think there's only like four or five songs that I can't find on Google Music that I did have on Spotify. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, but it's awesome, and I'm quite happy. It's a good time to mention um, um, Pandora actually switching up their rates as well. Uh, I'm a yearly. Yeah, they're adding a dollar. They're adding a dollar, and they're killing the yearly. We would pay the thirty-six dollars a year and just forget about it. You know, um, I have a little bit of a problem with that. Thankfully, I think I'm paid up until December. Uh, but beyond that, I'm going to have to make a decision. Do I do I stick with Pandora or do I, if I'm going to have to pay for something, do I start looking at Google? Do I start looking at Spotify or something? Um, I, Google is nine bucks a month. 
Yeah, but I mean, but you have more select. This is streaming radio. It's coming to you, you know. So I, I, so it still is half the price of doing something like that. I just don't like one more thing I have to keep track of coming out of my account, you know. Um, even if they raised the price and still gave me a yearly subscription, please do that. I have no problem with Here. that. I use the service. I, I've got I've got the answer for you, Sor. Mm -hmm. Sign up for iTunes Match, which is twenty five dollars a year, and use iTunes Radio. Uh, I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that. Because you can't use it on, on a Nexus tablet. You can't no, use no, it not even that. Not even that. I, I, great. I have my phone. Typically, I'm listening to music on my phone. But now, when I want to listen to music on my computer, I got to load up, load up iTunes versus bring up a browser. If there's a browser version of it, sure. Because then I can do it. Because then I have to be on a computer that has iTunes that I'm logged into and I can't use it in other places, and I have too many devices I'm on that I may want to bring something up on. So it's not mobile. Spotify, would, Spotify can do web now. You don't have to have the app anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and Google Music is definitely web-based. Exactly. Uh, I actually do use, but, I do use Google Music because I ported all my, uh, what, what was it? Like you can put up to like 20, or, or 2,000, 8,000, 10,000 songs on there. I did 20, that. 20,000. I did that, came really close to the limit, um, and and I use that to listen to my music or anything I buy on iTunes automatically goes in there because of the way it's set up on my computer. Um, and then I'm good, you know. And then I have Pandora for the, I just want to hit play. But I mean, that, that, that works for me, it's not for everybody, uh, but it seems to make sense. And I don't have to pay for uh, it. If, in addition, uh, some kind, kind soul uh, made a Google Music app for the Mac, Mm -hmm. uh, and it's nothing more than like a web browser wrapped inside of the, uh, of their app. It's literally it's 500k to download the uh, the app. It's not that big at all. Mm -hmm. um, but kind it, it integrates with the um, play and next and previous tracks on uh, on the keyboard, which is so very nice to have. Uh, before you would have to find the window and then hit pause. Uh, you find the play button and then click it, versus just having the play button on your keyboard. So it works with that. It works with my third-party keyboard that I have at home. Um, so I'm, I'm really quite happy about that. Uh, and plus, it's just a nicer interface, and I'm uh, I avoid browser unnecessary browser tabs during the day. I have very few open. I don't like leaving a browser tab open. All the time to run something because I inadvertently close them all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I like having a separate app for those sorts of things, so that's why I use things like Fluid and and the Google Music app. Awesome. Uh, real quick, last thing: OneNote is now on iOS and it's free for everybody. It's on. Well, wait. It's, it's on, on everything on, free. It's on iOS. It's on Android. It's Whoa. on Mac. It's it on was, Windows. It's, it's yeah. It's the top thing on the Mac download mm -hmm. right now. It's the, the first thing to disrupt uh, the OS update What's for Mavericks. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> wow. I, I will say this: I, I am a deep, deep Evernote user. Um, Do you pay for Evernote? Because, uh, my company does. Okay. So we have Evernote Business, which is pretty awesome because then we can share notebooks internally. Um, so all of our uh, technical pre-sales guys, they all have their own notebooks, and then all the engineers have their notebooks. And so we share them all, and we also share uh, – I created a travel recommendation notebook. So internally, uh, I, I have a list for each city, and then inside I have these, like, these hotels are decent, these – Places are feet are pretty good to go eat at, and uh, I also had a couple other things in there. But it's like, one, because we're so ingrained in Evernote, everybody uses it. It is the standard, so nobody wants to break the standard. But I know people who use who use OneNote for like storing drawings and stuff. But um, now that now the OneNote is everywhere, it sings and it's on every platform. Yeah, I can see him taking a shot at Evernote. Well, it surprised me too because on their launch, the, um, they're now integrating with a bunch of stuff. They integrate with Feedly. There's a couple yep. apps that Microsoft made. You can you can actually use like a kind of like a browser plugin 
you can you can to, to clip to your to your OneNote. You can email yourself a web link, and it will add it to your OneNote. So they they seem to kind of hit the ground running. Yeah, and, and this is uh, supposedly this week we we're probably going to get an office for the iPad, uh, which I think is going to be the first maybe of the touch capable uh, office versions. So we'll see what happens there. And I'm hoping yeah. I, I will pay for office for the for the ipad but i will not pay a subscription for oh, it oh this is weird i'm sorry this, i don't have to worry this, about that either because is... uh my company uses office 365 for mail mm-hmm. so all of this of these nice office 365 subscription based things i get all of them and i don't pay for any of them it's great um i I'm, I'm interested to see the other stuff that microsoft is supposedly announcing at uh on their yeah. their Announcement on Thursday. Oh, the announcement on uh, Thursday. Rumors, yeah. rumors are going around for Windows Phone 8.1, uh, which should bring Notification Center, which is one of the things that, that also made me mad about Windows Phone. There's no Notification Center. They've relied on those live tiles. That stinks. Um, it was Windows Phone 8.1, uh, perhaps a preview of Windows 9. Um, and I want to say it was Windows Server 20. 16 it's the server version of windows 9 um which is coming soon i don't see too many people using two this windows server 2012 yet i i see it occasionally i don't see it very often uh, which is odd to me but all right so what's what's coming up here we got a lot of events including that Chilla. So there's the build conference coming up, um, and that is Mar- that's March or no, I'm sorry, that's April second through the fourth. I think that's where we'll hear about like the, some of the Windows and server, newer Windows server stuff. Mm. Um, the the announcement from Microsoft on the 27th, um, and then March 27th through the 29th is Mac World, which is also being branded um, iWorld. iWorld. Yeah. Um, that's where actually that that uh app that i covered last week the for hitting up multiple social networks okay they're every post i think it was yeah they're yeah. they're gonna be they're they're one of the six big apps of the year or something and we like did that have a couple world. of notes from people saying hey thanks for that we're gonna check that out <clears throat> yeah so so those are, those... um uh, coming up on my side of things uh tech ed is beginning of may and then uh, EMC World is after that. EMC World encompasses VMware, EMC, which is a big storage company, and RSA, security company. Uh, they do a lot of cloud stuff, so uh, uh, that those are nice things. Cisco Live comes after that. Uh, I might be, I, fingers crossed, I might be in San Francisco for Cisco Live. Um, and then, uh, when is that? This EMC World, Cisco, EMC World, Cisco Live, TechEd. Oh, I had another one in my head, and I came. Oh, uh, Google just had an announcement this morning, but no one picked up on. Uh, they came out with a completely new cloud platform. Slipped right by everyone. They they came out with their new uh, what? A new cloud platform. And now I have to find this thing about it. I know Microsoft's rebranding the name of uh, it. Also... I didn't see Are they the rebranding people. Azure? Yeah, it's it's no longer gonna be Windows Azure. It's gonna be just it's either it's either Microsoft Azure or just Azure. That wasn't a huge thing, but I, it's like they're dropping the Windows name from it. Can they change the name because no one knows? They need to they, what they need to do is they need to change the name of Azure to something else because I don't know how many uh, people can pronounce Azure correctly. We need to change that. Yeah. But what's what's the Google what's Google's new cloud platform? Uh, I'm trying to open a site in terrible So they're what they. It's way too late in the show for me to try to explain. Yeah, so we'll, we'll right look into that because it'll take me too yeah. long, and yeah. I know that. Yeah. So basically, you have you have two sides of things. You have an infrastructure side, and you have a platform side. So infrastructure means you just take your existing virtual machines and you send them off 
to whatever cloud infrastructure you'd like to use. VMware has one called vCloud Hybrid Service. Um, the Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud is another one, uh, EC2. And so those those things, you could just take your VMs and then you put them over here and then you run your stuff. Normally, you're just not running it internally at your own company. And then the other side is a platform cloud where you can just deploy apps to pre-existing services and you don't care what else you're running it on. It's all multi-tenant. And the problem was is that they were considered two separate things. And now Google is trying to shove them together. Um, and they're, they, what they've created is they're calling it Google Managed VMs, uh, where they're raw VMs. You can run whatever you want to, but Google will do all of the management for you. Um, and then it will spread your software across more of the VMs and do all of the load balancing stuff that Google's really, really, really good at that most developers are, well, not good at, and hopefully that'll make things better. Um, I'm interested to see where they go with this. They also drop pricing. Um, I did see that. Prices will drop by 53% on virtual machines you use 24 hours a day, seven days a week over the course of the month. Uh, 32% across the Google Compute Engine. Uh, there, where's the, where's the other one? I thought there was another one that I saw that it was like, we'll drop your costs by 68% on Google Cloud Storage and 85% on Google BigQuery. Uh, and also Google Drive prices dropped significantly. You get 100 mm-hmm. gigs for two bucks a month now. I already sent, is, I already sent a uh, service note out to all my clients, let them know that I'm dropping Dropbox for that and signed a couple people up for, a couple people up for uh, uh, Drive in the meantime. Did you... Yeah. Did you see how much uh, how much ten bucks a month gets you? A terabyte. Actually, I mm-hmm. uh, after I started moving everything over from Dropbox, <laughs> I, I killed Dropbox, which was ten dollars a month for a hundred gigabytes, and just went ahead and signed up for the ten dollar Google Drive because I was already paying the previously five dollar hundred gigabyte version. I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's just go ahead and do this. Um, unfortunately, then yeah, I have to be very, very terabyte. selective about what actually goes on each computer. Because, for instance, um, I turned on all the computers down here, and some of them are just uh, set to load everything from Google Drive, which wasn't a problem before. Uh-oh. Now it's a big problem. <laughs> and I had to go hit yeah. pause on everything. So I'm going to be, uh, I think, going to uh, work on that whole situation here after all the shows tonight. So uh, with that, thanks, yeah, AJ. I think I... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go, 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 go. Okay, Get us out okay. of here. Get us out of here. Uh, so. Also coming up, uh, <laughs> TEDx Grandview Avenue sold out, but uh, they're going to have details on the live stream, stream soon, so go check that out. Tech Cocktails coming up here April 17th. They got tickets available over there at tech.co. Uh, so with that, uh, we're, you know, we're running a little button up against the end time here. AJ, virtualpotholes.com. Thumbs up for that. Go to my blog. Read my things. AJ Kupthick on Twitter. Also, at Shilla. John Chichilla on the Twitters. That's no, me. Follow at along. Chilla on the Twitter. At Chilla. That's more accurate. Uh, he's your he's your gadget guy. He really is. If you have any questions I, about I any recommendations, problem. you should probably send your uh, questions over to him. So, and of course, I'm at Sorgatron on Twitter. Uh, check all of our shows out at SorgatronMedia.com. All the stuff like the uh, the LG. Uh, 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 Bluetooth that we were talking about earlier, any other products that we come across from this show, you can check out awesomecast.com. We got Amazon links over there, so go click on those if you're going to buy anything. Give us a little bit of kickback. Support the show uh, in that way. And tell your friends about us. If you dig us, if you dig uh, the tech talk we have or you want to contribute, uh, of course, awesomecast.com, at awesomecast on Twitter. Uh, look for us on Google Plus and Facebook, audio and video versions on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, and Spreaker. And of course, thanks. Returning this week, Mike Allen and at Mike Allen PR, uh, helping with the show notes all night long. Uh, so go uh, go say thank you to him right now. Go tweet him at Mike Allen PR and say thank you for doing your thing in helping us out. Thank you. Uh, with that, I'm sorry. With everybody else, thanks to our awesome chat room that's been hopping all night. Uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Get it awesome. We're getting-